Hey, how's it going? Today I'm talking about what is the best way to train for a half marathon or two course challenge? This is Running to the Castle, a podcast for injury prone run Disney runners on a journey to running magical miles. Join me, Dr. Allie, as I share the secrets I've gathered as a runner, doctor of physical therapy, and coach. You'll learn the exact ways I get my clients to the castle strong without feeling broken or held together with KT tape as they cross the finish line. I have been seeing lots of posts in the Run Disney Facebook group or just other running groups that I'm part of in um, on Facebook, and I've been seeing an uptick in recommendations or somebody saying that this is what they're doing, that they build up to running 10 miles as their long run. And then they just run 10 miles every two weeks as their long run. And somebody was asking, somebody who's doing this was asking, well, I ran my 10 miles last week and I feel pretty good to run 10 miles this weekend, but should I skip it? I have a half marathon next weekend, the following weekend. And so, My professional opinion is please, please, please do not do this. So instead, the best way to do it is to incrementally build up to the 10 miles because that should be your longest training run for a half marathon or the two course challenge distance. So I do like that they're not running more than that. That's an A plus right there. However, doing it, multiple weekends, especially the weekend before a half marathon, is is no good. And the reason for that is 10 miles is 70% of race distance for the longest distance of the half marathon or the two course challenge. So that's the ideal longest run to do during a training plan. But you want to give yourself a buffer between the the weekend you do your longest run and when race weekend is. So if you're running a half marathon or the two course challenge, I do recommend that that longest run should be three or four weeks, probably three weeks before race weekend to give your body time to recover from those 10 miles and have energy for the race. So If you're starting out, since I said I would walk you through how much to actually train. So for a half marathon and two course challenge, you're with the two course challenge aspect, you you are following the long run mileage of the half marathon and then incorporating some simulation weekends so that you have some back to back running. So typically what I recommend doing is for a half marathon, you do three runs a week. So it's one long run and then two shorter runs that if you're capable, if you're able to do it, you can do a speed work. Otherwise, those are just maintenance runs, Um, especially if you are actively injured, then I don't recommend speed work for somebody who's actively injured. We want to manage the pain and lower the amount of stress and pressure the body has while we're training. However, If you don't have an active injury, then you can do speed work. And so you have those three runs. And then if you're doing the two course challenge, every once in a while, I add in an extra run, take away a cross training day and add in an extra run. So you get a simulation weekend. So you can simulate doing the 10K immediately followed by the half marathon. And so my training plans start at Uh, assuming you can run a 5k distance. So if you can't run a 5k distance without pain, I recommend going from zero to 5k. I have a training plan for that. And my training plans work on the 10% rule for the long run. And then typically the run, the runs in the middle of the week are 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes for the half marathon training. And then I change that based on the actual person I'm working with, what their tolerance and abilities are, work-life balance, things like that, that might interfere with what days they can run or how long they can run, how much time they have and things like that. 
So starting off at a 5K distance, and then increasing by 10%, and then my clients have a history of injury, are injury prone or currently injured. So every five to six weeks, we taper back. And so you drop back by about 30%, and then you go back up by 10% of the previous week. So week five, let's say, I, I would have to look at the training plan, but let's say week five is four miles. And then week six, you drop back. And then week seven is 10% more on top of whatever week five was so that you're able to continuously increase. But with that taper week worked in to allow your body to adjust to the, the increase in mileage. And then you're keeping the midweek runs the same so that that's not added pressure. And then you increase until you hit max 10 miles. My half marathon and two course challenge uh, training plans are 14 weeks to race day and then two extra weeks, if I remember correctly. Maybe it's 15 weeks. But it's anywhere between uh, 14 and 16 weeks leading up to race day. And so once you hit that 10 mile, then you start to taper back because it's like Merida's bow and arrow, right? You can either pull it back a little bit and then let go. You can force it through, or you can pull back to the optimal amount and that arrow will fly far and straight. So that's how I think about the long run with the taper leading up to race weekend. It's that bow and arrow combination. You want to pull back on your running enough that you have energy to push through on race day. You don't want to just pull back a little bit because you'll only have enough energy to go a little bit. And you certainly don't want to force it through and keep adding more miles each week or repeat your 10 miler each week until race day because you won't have energy. We use that taper to build and gain energy to use on race day. So with a bow and arrow, when you pull back the optimal amount for how long that arrow is, it will go far and straight. And so same thing, you pull back the right amount of your running compared to how long your race is so if you are doing a 10K, you wouldn't have to taper as long as you would for a half marathon. And if you're doing a, a marathon, you would have to pull back more than what you do for a half marathon, right? So if you pull back just a little bit, let's use this half marathon example. If you only pull back and hold off on running for just one week, well, that's better than nothing. But it's not the optimal amount. The optimal amount is about three weeks. And I know that from my professional experience, trying it out personally, trying it out and professionally trying it out with my clients. Like, okay, let's run all the way up to the weekend before race and let's see what happens. Or even not doing that with my clients, I, I don't recommend it. But if they do it, okay, well, what happened? Or seeing somebody on Facebook talk about it. Or let's see, and so that would be a force through. And we know that if you force the arrow through the bow, it just plops right in front of you. It doesn't go far. And if you only pull back a week or two for that half marathon, like I said, it's better than nothing, but it doesn't have enough energy to really soar. But if you pull back that optimal amount, that three weeks or so, you will have energy to spare on race day, of course, combined with your fueling. But you need that taper to hold on to the energy and build it up so that you're ready to soar when the race comes around. As always, thanks so much for listening. That's all for now. Talk to you soon.